Hey you guys, welcome back to my homestead. If you're new here, I'm Esther and this is Esther's Eden. Uh, today, I thought I would share with you how I turn leftover pot roast into something different. I do not like leftovers. We ate very similar meals growing up over and over and over again and it just made me really not like leftovers. So unless I can turn it into something completely different, I don't wanna eat it. So. That's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna show you how to make pot pie. Homemade pot pie, so good, so full of gravy, just the way we like it. Now, my plan with this meal, because this is our busy day, was to actually prepare it, put it in the fridge, and then let my husband take it out and cook it. However, I realized that there's two problems with that. Number one, my husband is not going to know when it's done. I could probably try to tell him, but it can be a little finicky. And the second problem is, is that if I put this moist stuff inside my uncooked pastry, it may end up getting soggy and we don't want that. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get started. I will go ahead and clip in some footage of me teaching you how to make this pastry. It's just really, really basic. I got the recipe a really long time ago. I don't even remember where I got it, but I'm gonna show you how I make it a little bit differently than even the recipe that I started with. So here's that footage. First add two and a half cups of flour to a bowl. Then add one teaspoon of salt to the flour and two tablespoons of sugar. Mix it just a little bit. Then we're going to add five tablespoons of leaf lard. Now you can also use shortening if you want, but I find that the leaf lard produces the most amazing flavor. Now you're going to take one stick of butter and you're going to use, so this is frozen butter and you're going to take this cheese grater and you're going to shred the butter. Now this is really, really hard. You didn't know I could grade that fast, did you? <laughs> um, you can also use refrigerated butter and just chop it into pieces and use like a pastry cutter, but I love this method. And I first learned about this on Sally's Baking Addiction. So a shout out to her because you helped me make great pastries. So thank you, Sally. <clears throat> it is really hard work to do this, though. <laughs> it's a great exercise. Now I'm just going to use a wooden spoon. A wooden spoon is obviously my very favorite kitchen utensil. I use it for pretty much all of my cooking. It's just what I'm used to. Feel free to use a pastry cutter or your hands or whatever you want. I'm just going to very carefully mix it. You don't want to mix it too much though. And then I'm going to finish by hand mixing. And you're going for sort of a corn meal sort of texture. One of the great tricks for pastry, making awesome pastry, is to not over mix it and over handle it. Okay, now I'm just going to make a little well in the center. 
Now I have made this many times so I know exactly which cup I want to use to figure out how much water and sort of the look I'm going for. But if you want an exact recipe, it's eight tablespoons of ice water. My faucet water is like ice though, considering we have a well. Um, but if yours is not, I suggest going ahead and throwing a couple of ice cubes in that glass. If you overwork your pastry at this point, you will end up with very tough pastry. And if you want to keep that light flaky, then you just sort of want to not work it too much. Right now, what we're just trying to do is get the water sort of incorporated so that we can make one rough mass. This is very different than bread making. Pastry, you want everything to stay cold. With bread, obviously, you want everything to be warm. Okay, so now we're just testing it to see can it all hold together. If it does not hold together, like you can see, then I will add a teeny little bit of more water. Just, I mean, drops. And then work it back together. I'm certainly not kneading it or overworking it at this point. You just really want to be able to get that to clump together. Perfect. You can see I have just a tiny bit left over in the bowl, so I've learned I can just make a little pocket and shove it in there, and <laughs> it works just fine. Now, I'm not really kneading it per se. I just want to get it to be a little bit more smooth. Just give it two or three good workovers here and then make a ball. I cut it in half. That's going to be my top and bottom pie crust. And then I'm going to reshape each side into sort of a rough ball. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then make each ball into a little disc. Now we're going to wrap them in plastic wrap and we're going to put them in the refrigerator. Now if you want to use these right away, you're going to at least, at the very minimum, give them one hour in the refrigerator. But I like to make them up to 24 hours in advance. This time I actually made a couple of batches of pastry. If you're going to make more than one batch, I suggest doing it a single batch at a time. It doesn't take that much effort, but man, it makes a huge difference in the end result. So there you have it. Okay, you're back. Now you know how to make pastry. This has been sitting in my fridge for about three days. That is the longest I would ever let pastry sit in my fridge. It doesn't look gray. If it starts to look gray um, or kind of discolored, that is when you know that you should throw it away and start over. Um, if you're gonna leave it in your refrigerator for longer than three days, Look, I Mom, highly suggest you put it in the freezer instead. Oh, where did those come from? Mm -hmm. Um, there. Can oh. we, me and Maggie eat one? Um, sure. Okay. They found M&Ms. I don't know where those came from. Although we did make little Valentine's Day things last night for their friends, so <laughs> maybe? Um, all right, so first of all, I'm going to go ahead and stand up here. No. All right. So we're just going to very lightly, well, medium flour our surface. Depending on the type of surface you're working with, you may need more or less flour. And then I like to spread just a touch over the top. And then a touch more on my rolling pin. Let's move you guys a little bit closer. There. Now we're just gonna roll it out. This is the pan I'm using. I like to use a deeper dish. I'm not sure, does this say what size it is? It doesn't say, so I don't know. I don't know how big this pan is, but I do know it's a deep dish. You could use a smaller one if you want to. You just have more of a chance of it overflowing. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and roll out the 
this pie crust into a nice circle or somewhat of a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is our bottom pie crust. Now you also do not have to use a top and a bottom. You could just put your ingredients directly into the pie pan. But I don't know about you guys, we really like pastry in this family. So if we're gonna go all out and make homemade pot pie, we might as well make it the way we like it. Okay, let's test that out. That should be pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and lay that in. Hang on, it's time to be mama. We're back. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so we're just gonna stretch this out, kind of flatten it down in the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. scooch it just a little bit. We want to try to have all of these edges covered. It's a little bit harder with a deep dish. This pie crust generally works better for a shallower pan, but that'll work just fine. Now, now that we have that prepared, scooch it aside. We're going to work with our stuff here. Now, <clears throat> if I know that I'm going to be making a, a uh, pot pie out of my roast at the time then I will go ahead and get as much of the ingredients prepared for this part as possible. So I've already cut up my potatoes and I've already have my carrots the right size. I just need to cut some of this meat up. I'm actually going to grab a cutting board for that. Now you probably just heard the oven. I like to preheat the oven till about 400 degrees. Since all of this is already cooked, we really are only cooking the pie crust. Now, if you don't want to make your own pie crust, you totally don't have to. You can buy it from the store. I just find homemade is not that difficult and tastes way better. We'll save this nice fat, fatty piece here for the pup. She'll be very happy to have a treat. Okay, so we have all of our meat all broken up. <clears throat> now what we're gonna do is we're going to assemble. First we put our veggies in. And I really just roughly chopped these potatoes. They got quite cooked. We ate a little bit later than I expected to be eating but that's just fine. Then we're gonna put in our meat. Now this isn't gonna cook down a huge amount because it's already cooked. So we're just heating it through. leftover gravy. Um, if you have not, if you don't have any leftover gravy or you want to know, I will go ahead and link that video in and I show you how to make this gravy. Any gravy will do though. If you have a great family recipe, you can go ahead and use your own. So I'm just going to put that over the top and it will totally melt in and be wonderful. Sometimes I, if I don't have very much gravy, I will add more in, but I think this will be plenty. And 
and I'm definitely going to use all of it. I think it might have been a little bit better had I layered the gravy on, but it, it'll still be great. It'll be just fine. I am wondering if I should make more gravy. Nobody likes a dry pot pie. But if I make more gravy, and then it's gonna be super soupy, <laughs> nobody wants that either. So maybe we'll just leave it. I don't know, we'll leave it. <laughs> Judgment call, what would you have done? Let me know in the comments. Let's get that out of the way. Now we're gonna roll out our second pie crust. Now, sometimes if you know you're gonna be a while, you can leave this in the fridge and just pull it out right before you're gonna use it. But I knew I wasn't going to take too long over this. should be good. We're going to go ahead and flip this over the top. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to take our knife. We're going to run around the edge. Just cutting off that excess pie crust. <clears throat> I will leave it out. If you have children, this makes a great replacement for Play-Doh. I already have one child <laughs> claiming it. Okay, now um, you can make this crust as fancy as you want. I'm gonna make it really simple because we're kind of in a, well, it's a busy day. Let's just put it that way. So I'm just gonna run this fork around the edges and just crimp the two crusts together. If you have extra helpers in the kitchen, this is usually a great job for them to do. My helpers are being a little bit cranky right now, so they're off for some quiet time in their bedrooms. Okay, if there's any extra, go ahead and shave that off. Because all that's gonna happen is if you have too much on the outside, like I've got some right here, then it will um, tend to burn or get way too brown. This is sort of like a ruffled edge on this. Okay, that'll be, we're gonna call that good. Okay, now, now we're gonna take this egg and we're gonna discard we're going to make a little treat for the puppy here. Okay, she gets the whites. And where did that? There it is. This nice piece of meat here. That'll be a good treat for her. I am getting her used to eating people food so that she can eat homemade dog food. We're not totally there yet, but we will be. Okay, now we're gonna put just a teeny little bit of water in this. See that? Not too much. Now this is what's called an egg wash. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to give our pie crust an absolutely beautiful golden 
tint to it. I am severely tempted to put this and this in the fridge and make my husband do this, but um, I've never done that before and we're getting home super late. I think I'm gonna have to do that as an experiment. If I do, I will let you guys know. The next time I make pot pie, I will purposefully pre-make it and put it in the fridge. And I will let you guys know how that goes because now I'm really curious. Now, you wanna make sure that you cut a couple vent holes um, for this to cook. Otherwise, you may end up with big air bubbles. And also the vent holes help you know when this pie is done without having to chop it in half because once the, the gravy gets bubbly, then you know the middle's hot. So I'm just gonna keep it real basic. Three nice little slits. Perfection. These are not my favorite. I used to have an amazing horsehair wooden pastry brush from England that I loved so much and so did the mice. They stole it, they ate it, <clears throat> I found it much far, much later. I was really sad, but this does do the trick. This just doesn't work very well if you're trying to do anything delicate. <clears throat> now we're just gonna nicely brush this over the entire crust. Try not to let it pool too much. It's not a huge deal if it does. I would love to know if you guys have your own favorite pie crust recipe and if you'd be willing to share it with us that'd be super exciting i'm certainly not boasting that this is the most amazing pie crust ever but it does the trick Alrighty, that's all brushed now i'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven and i'm going to cook it for we're going to do about 35 minutes to start with and see what the crust is looking like and see if it's getting cooked, but it will most likely take about 45 minutes, which again is why I'm going ahead and getting it done. So 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Absolutely perfect. Turned out so good. So I'm just going to leave this now to sit and cool. Um, probably till we leave. I may not even put it in the fridge. We'll see. It just kind of depends on um, timing how long it takes to cool down. Uh, we generally would just be eating this right now, but since we have to go do some stuff, I, I'm just gonna let my husband reheat this. Probably, so that cooked it for about 40 minutes. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not sure that it got entirely hot in the inside. It got mostly done. So maybe 45 minutes would have been perfect. But um, I think I will just tell my husband heat it at 350 for 30 minutes. That should be enough to reheat it. And, and then that way we can have it when we get home. Um, um, thank you again for joining me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love for you to go ahead and hit that little subscribe button down below and that way you don't miss any more of our exciting videos. I hope I'll see you guys again real soon.